Namaste World Razor, Sabina and Roger here. Let's watch Inside Tirumala, Tirupati, a documentary by National Geographic. And it was a request by our world mystic Rakesh. Hmm. We know literally nothing about this temple. Yeah, you, absolutely nothing. Absolutely no, nothing. No idea. Not even the name. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, please hit the like and subscribe button and let's go. Of the many faiths practiced in the world, Hinduism is considered to be the oldest living religion. In yeah. India, it has endured for thousands of years and has dotted the landscape with innumerable temples. But there is one that towers atop the hills of southern India as one of the most visited Hindu religious sites anywhere on the planet. Oh, this is some cool. unique place. You feel like you are very attached to God. Hmm. Now, National Geographic takes you on a panoramic tour to lay open the workings of the sanctum. Hmm. Cool. Ah. Witness iconic traditions and the jubilant celebration of Tirumala Brahmotsavam hmm. at the Tirumala oh, nice. temple of Sri Venkateshwara Swami. Oh, hmm. never heard of that Swami. No. Wow, it looks very promising. Yeah, it looks good so far. On the face of it, Tirupati in the state of Andhra Pradesh has the hectic oh. buzz of any urban city in modern India. Is he? Garuda? Its claim to fame, however, is as the gateway to a centuries-old spiritual haven. Tirupati marks the beginning of an uphill journey through the Seishachalam or Seven Hills Ranges. Spread across 8,000 square kilometers, these hills date back over 500 million years. The journey through these enchanting hills leads to the temple town of Tirumala. The temple town. For much temple of the town. over one billion strong global Hindu population, this town holds great significance. Standing at about 2,500 feet above sea level, Tirumala is one of the most visited Hindu pilgrim spots on the planet. Drawing an average of 60 to 70,000 people a day oh. and over 100,000 oh. people on special occasions. <laughs> wow. They all seek entry to the temple oh, dedicated no. to the god Sri Venkateshwara Swami. Hmm. Oh, it's a god? Yeah. Oh. Sounds like it. Hmm. The God is the central theme in the 15th century devotional works of bard and mystic Annamacharya. But the legend of Sri Venkateswara Swami goes back further still. One must turn the ancient pages of Hindu texts called the Puranas to find the mythological concept of the Holy Trinity. Vishnu, the universal preserver, along with Brahma, the creator, and Shiva, the destroyer. It is Vishnu who has a special relationship with the Tirumala temple. Oh. One of the temple's four chief priests explains the god's significance. Vishnu is not a name, but it is an attribute to the supreme energy which exists throughout the universe and beyond. These three are the three phases of a single energy which creates, maintains and destroys the entire creation. As the scriptures tell it, Vishnu visited Earth several times and in several human and animal forms over epochs. There are different versions, but no matter the legend, a steady thread remains. Vishnu manifested as Sri Venkateshwara Swami and the benevolent deity took up permanent residence in Tirumala. It is this God ensconced within the exclusive confines of the sanctum 
that thousands of people flock to visit each day. Tirumala Temple, a towering example of Dravidian architecture, a style that dates back to the 7th century. Love this, style. this architecture is typified by looming pyramid like structures known as Gopurams and pillared halls known as Mandapams. Gopurams and pillared walls are typically enveloped in inscriptions and handcrafted sculptures that tell stories of different dynasties. Looks, looks like Tibetan. Tirumala has endured through the 9th century Pallava dynasty to the 11th century Cholas of Tanjavur. In the 14th and 15th centuries, the temple town came under the influence of the Vijayanagara dynasty. In the 1800s and through the first quarter of the 20th century, the British Empire collected revenues. Finally, in 1933, a special legislative act was passed creating an autonomous body to administer the temple and associated activities. It was named Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanams or TTD. It is TTD that even today is charged with looking after the devotees' pilgrimage from the time they enter Tirumala. Are we allowed in? Almost every devotee that visits Tirumala has the same goal to perform darshan or a special sighting of the holy deity of Sri Venkateshwara Swami. Oh. I am I am here. I am here. I am I am here. I am but the path to fulfilling darshan isn't without effort. <laughs> ah. For the journey is long, beginning at the bottom of the hills at Tirupati. There are two wow. modes to reach the top. One could take a drive through the Seishachalam's winding roads and reach in well under an hour. What? Yes. But many choose the more arduous way, just like a 16th century king did no. on foot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Climbers can choose one of two footpaths. They can pick the Srivari Mettu route, a short but grueling climb of two kilometers. The divine experience, we can say. This uh, yearly once coming to visit our own uh, family god is a kind of an experience that you relish throughout the year. They can also pick Alipiri Mettu, at nine kilometers, the route is longer, wow. but it's a gentler slope mm. that's popular with many. Oh. It's basically by word of mouth that I have come to Tirupati. I have heard a lot that whatever you wish does come true. Wow. So that has been a wish for a long time. Just wanted to fulfill that. Along the way, one can witness the many ways devotees choose to climb, mm. like anointing each step with vermilion. I actually never heard that before. Animal. The steps. <laughs> that reminds me of the Some devotees even get on hands and knees, <laughs> oh, wow. crawling over stretches in the climb. Beautiful. And then there are those who just enjoy the hike. I felt the mountain is quite it's quite small, but when I start climbing, it's really steeper. Mm -hmm. It's taking quite a bit of your energy to come up. Gali Gopuram is an important pit stop on the Alipiri route, not just to catch a breath, but to register for darshan. Today, 
the process is streamlined with a computerized what? token system wow. and the trek itself is dotted with cool. modern day amenities put into place over decades of administration by the Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanams or TTD. You have a biometrics here, you have your photo here That's and this why? card cannot be transferred and you are uh, provided with uh, whatever things that are needed for a devotee to climb up that is given. Oh. All pilgrims, whether arriving on foot or in vehicles, reach Tirumala, a town that centers around Sri Venkateshwara Swami. Oh. From here, some may choose to take a detour to the Kalyana Kakta. A special ritual conducted here leads to one of the most distinctive sights seen all across Tirumala town. Tonsured heads that pop up in every direction one looks. Tonsuring is customary for many devotees to do before darshan. The ritual is considered a symbolic effacing of the ego and the purging of vanity before appearing in front of God. Oh, yeah. We're all ready to go. <laughs> Shaved head or not, for devotees seeking a holy sighting of their God, their time in the darshan waiting lines begins now. Amongst those in line are pilgrims who have trekked uphill for hours and are now looking at standing for many hours more. Incredible. Which is why, over the years, darshan queues have had many resting galleries installed, including the Vaikuntam queue complex. Good thing too, because with devotee numbers averaging over 50,000 a day, the wait can extend up to 10 hours and more. As crowds increased year by year, TTD's authorities have turned to information technology yet again for a simple solution. Pre-booked darshan appointments one can make online. That's cool. No matter which route, line or queue <laughs> yeah, one yeah. takes, yeah. at Tirumala, it all leads to the same threshold. <laughs> the Sri Venkateshwara Swami Temple. Oh, oh it's, it's just a magic. Yeah. The main temple spans about 2.2 acres in area, stretching 415 feet in length and 263 feet in width. Devotees pass through the Mahadwaram, 50-foot-tall outer Gopuram or tower, entering an open courtyard marked by an ornate flagstaff called the Dvajasthambam. As they walk, to their left is the Ranganayaka Mandapam, to the right is the Aina Mahal, a hall of mirrors that reflects images in wow. an infinite series. Cool. Devotees pass through Vendi Vakili, a silver entrance into the main sanctum, where they come upon the Bangaru Vakili, or golden entrance. Mm. Within the Bangaru Vakili is a threshold, beyond which most pilgrims cannot go. Here, a series of dark halls leads the way to the inner sanctum, each chamber narrowing in width. Many believe this narrowing symbolizes the soul's journey into the womb of the divine, oh, wow. which is it. why, perhaps, the innermost sanctum where the main deity resides is referred to in Sanskrit as Garbhagruha, or womb-like chamber. The main deity is supposed to be protected from all the natural elements like wind, sunlight, rain, storms to maintain the supreme energy inside. And the sanctum is also a private territory 
only the priests can enter the sanctum sanctorum hmm. and the other devotees has to stand outside the that threshold many devotees will have to make do by following their line of sight within the bangaru vakili if they're lucky they'll get just a few seconds before their time is up for those at home however there is one way to get a closer look and understand the inner sanctum like only a few can After waiting in line for hours, devotees are at the threshold of the inner sanctum inside the Sri Venkateshwara Swami temple in Andhra Pradesh. But there's an operational challenge for the Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanams. Bound by ancient texts known as Agama Shastras, TTD does not have the religious sanction to expand the main temple entrance. which means managing crowds through ancient doors that act as both entry and exit oh yeah. we are governed by agama shastra <laughs> it prohibits us from making any alterations to the existing entry points mm. to the temple oh, so wow. there is no other second route for these two specific passages mm. A single point entry swallows huge swathes of devotees mm. into the sanctum. First, a batch of pilgrims is allowed to enter. Then, inflow is stopped momentarily mm. to allow for exiting. Oh. An estimated oh, wow. 4000 pilgrims pass through this doorway in a single mm. hour wow. on an average day. So we maintain generally a standard of 3 minutes in, 4 minutes out. 3 minutes in 4 minutes out third time 3 minutes in 5 minutes out hmm. where are all these people coming from from the queues no i mean like in general like devotee is lucky if they get more than a few seconds in front of the innermost sanctum or garba gruha finally get to see the id and the peace that we get in that's what drives us yes after standing around like hours and hours when you just stand in front of the dt you only in peace nothing else only to get that fraction of second we come there that's it the time you see him itself you forget everything you only keep looking at him you don't even know what you should pray to so you just keep looking at him that's that's enough for us a few seconds may or may not be enough for most devotees but in this chamber There are many wonders that might need a longer glimpse. Mm -hmm. So, where rituals don't allow, ingenuity has found a way. Welcome to the Namuna Alayam or replica temple, oh. a near exact oh. copy of the inner halls of the temple. Cool. It was built in 2008 wow. by the temple sanctioned television broadcaster SBBC. or the Sri Venkateshwara Bhakti channel People wanted to see the glory of Venkateshwara so we are not permitted to go there so for that we come and wanted to see all those things so we have constructed a replica That's of the entire Tirumala temple idea. in oh, Tirupati we are Amazing. shooting all the servas of Lord Venkateshwara as it is as it is as it, is, it happens in the uh, Tirumala temple The Namuna Alayam or replica temple bears a striking resemblance to the actual one especially the Garba Gruha or innermost chamber It is here that the principal deity wow. or Mool Virat of Sri Venkateshwara Swami stands tall in black stone presiding at a height of 8 wow. feet The faithful know him by many different names including Sri Venkateshwara Swami, Tirumala Balaji, Govinda and Srinivasa. Oh, There's no conclusive Govinda. theory as to who sculpted or installed the idol here. Huh? And many believe it self-manifested mm. here in its wow. current form. It is this form that's most replicated in portraits and images representing Sri Venkateshwara Swami. 
but it is by no means the only one because the main deity is surrounded by different idols each representing a different identity and having a designated purpose and occasion the silver Bhoga Srinivasa idol is the form that most daily rituals are addressed to there is the Koluvu Srinivasa idol which symbolically officiates temple affairs Ugra Srinivasa represents the angry form of the god and then there is Sri Maliappa Swami flanked by female consorts Bhudevi and Sridevi every day it is this idol that leaves the sanctum for ritual services and it is this idol that will be mounted on grand processions during the upcoming annual mega festival of Pramotsavam Oh, another festival. Yeah, when is, Whether when inside when? or outside, the sanctum idols are adorned in ornaments made of precious jewels. They are clothed in rich traditional weaves. The devotee loves to present the Lord the best of everything in the creation, like the best of silks, the best of jewelry, the best of flowers, the best of fragrances. The deity's vestments aren't the only luxurious items used in temple Amazing. rituals, which include some of the most exclusive natural resources found in India. The forests surrounding Tirumala are part of the Seishachalam Biosphere Reserve. Amongst its most high-value plant species is sandalwood, highly sought for its scented heartwood. Incense. The sandalwood uh, was uh, very abundant in Tirumala as well as in the southern states of India. Now because of uh, over exploitation, illicit felling and uh, unscientific management, and unconcerned about the species, uh, uh, this uh, population actually declining mm. uh, to the rock bottom. Sandalwood is used daily in ritual services mm -hmm. at the Tirumala temple. TTD's reforestation will ensure that supply lasts for at least a few more centuries. Nice. They started with 10 hectares of sandalwood plantation with a intensive scientific management. And this year we are extending to 100 hectares. So this 100 hectares together will certainly serve the purpose for 300 more years for temple. Inside the sanctum, it's not just high-quality ingredients that are used to complete the daily sevas. There's also a priesthood of over 200 priests, schooled in some of the most ancient Hindu texts that take years to master. A few kilometers from the Sri Venkateshwara Swami temple, inside the Seishachalam forest is Dharmagiri. It is home to the Venkateshwara Veda Vijnana Bhitam, an educational institute that seems to have stepped straight out of the Vedic age. <laughs> wow, I love it. The Venkateshwara Veda Vijnana Bhitam, noda mupai nalu samatsrala kritam sthapinta badindi. Manchu uttama ena twenty Veda panditulani. Alangkah dewa ala ya lo cakka ga arca na cerita ni ke samar dhenai tuan de arca kula ni, lengan perpanjen lo unne war andar ke gula pauro hitchen cerita ni ke cakka de puro hitul ni tayar cerita ni ki, ini beda bignyaan apa itu, orang terimal terima dewa istan dewa kan sahut tuan ni. Ancient systems of instruction come to life as students recite texts dating back thousands of years. Like the Vaikanasa Agama that prescribes virtually every aspect of life and ritual mm -hmm. at the Sri Venkateshwara Swami temple. Boys as young as 10 years old leave home and abandon mainstream school systems mm -hmm. to study the philosophy, metaphysics and strictures prescribed in these Sanskrit volumes. Fantastic. Perfect. Amazing. <laughs> 
రెండో సంవత్సరం చదువుతున్నాను ఆ ఇంట్లో అయితే ఇద్దరు ముగ్గురు ఉంటాం ఇక్కడైతే ఏడు వందల మందితో ఉంటున్నా అంటే చాలా ఆనందంగా ఉంది ఇక్కడైతే ఒక క్రియాధర్మం అంతా ఉంటుంది దానివల్ల ఇక్కడ యాక్టివిటీస్ అంతా బాగుంటుంది కాబట్టి చేస్తుంది After graduating, these students could eventually make it to the Tirumala temple as one of the 200 odd men that form its priesthood. Mm. 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 But maintaining the temple and its sanctity aren't just the preserve of its priests. There is a group that's crucial to the fabric of Tirumala. Let's find out what that crucial group is in part number two. I'm going to guess that it's going to be some sort of warrior class of men to guard oh. the place. Right? Because we're learning more and more about Sanatan Dharma mm. and you need the warriors as well. The guards, the, you know, the soldiers, mm. the peacekeepers, wow. the officers, amazing. but no idea really. I guess we'll find out in part number two. <laughs> yeah. What a fantastic documentary, Rakesh. Thank you. Oh, yeah, so good. And something that we had no idea about. And this is amazing. No. The amount of pilgrims no. going there every single day Mind is blowing. just astronomical. And I absolutely love pilgrimage. And I understand the hardships because yeah. we've done a few of them. And it's so Ooh. meaningful. And I love how they have the options. You know, you can... You can, you know, drive, and then they have the two foot paths. Amazing. And the really grueling one, like straight up two kilometers long. Which that, one are we going to take? That would be intense. Honestly, I thought of the longer one, the, longer the nine one? kilometers, okay. because it's still, you know, it'd be more engrossing. Yeah, not as physically demanding or grueling, but there'd probably be like more things to see on the way oh. also. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, I see. Because it's a longer route, so... But anyways, we can eventually do both. But first, we have to find out if we're even allowed. Yes, our Westerners allowed. I'm not sure if I've seen any Westerners mm -hmm. there. Yeah, and then... Uh, so, and then I want to know more about this deity, because the first thing that crossed my mind, so obviously a manifestation of Vishnu. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if he was in... Um, remember that one video we watched about all the avatars? Not the Dash avatar, but the other one yep. that had many of them. I'm pretty sure he must have been Maybe. in that as one of the avatars. Yeah, and I wonder if this temple was in one of the temple videos we watched. Like the largest temples or something. Oh yeah, I don't recall. But because well, there's maybe. a few, there's a few temples that look that have that shape. Yeah. But maybe it was. So, anyways, getting uh, more and more info. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah. Just uh, showing the diversity and the you know the many incarnations, many forms of the divine. Amazing. It's beautiful. I actually had quite the reaction when I saw the statue. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. So there was some. Hmm twitching and some uh, spasms going on in my body and just thinking of it now i don't know <laughs> when i saw the form um yeah yeah and then even the name so govinda and i recognize govinda as krishna, another name of shri govinda, krishna right govinda, so so basically govinda. from a certain point of view so this is probably another incarnation or manifestation of krishna right just like jagannath so i wonder if there's any mm connection so i was looking at the other deities thinking i would see krishna in there but i don't think i no. did or even jagannath but no, i think it's all got to be interrelated and interconnected i haven't recognized a single name of a single deity there mm. yeah well i mean i can't believe that <laughs> you know we watch so many videos mm. and yet like uh, so much we have we haven't we even know. heard of yeah uh, we're still getting you know shocked and like shocked. overwhelmed by the diversity here's a totally new deity to us and sounds like everybody knows about it knows about it in <laughs> india and practicing sanat and dharma because so many people have gone there on pilgrimage, right? Yeah. So, um, so they are planting trees that, like the sandalwood, mm -hmm. is it trees or bushes? Yeah. Um, trees or bushes. So they sure. can keep off making offerings yeah, with the totally. sandalwood. That, that is amazing. Like just think about it. Planning ahead, so it's yeah, amazing. Yeah, uh, for the next three hundred years. So that's incredible effort. Uh, and uh, thank God for that. Yeah, just stories like that. They just like, mm -hmm. th 
there's so much so many beautiful things happening in this world you know like mm -hmm. usually when you watch the news which we don't um it just looks like you know the world is in a complete disaster mm. but then you watch documentaries like these where people also you know make like um the foot the steps mm -hmm. where they just make offerings there and it's just incredible it's the faith it. they have and the devotion mm -hmm. is just beyond and it's just yeah there's no ego involved like how can you do mm. that like for hours you know can you imagine your body <laughs> hurting mm. like why would you do yeah. that other than with complete faith and devotion it's just yeah. blowing my mind it's so beautiful because not only climbing all of those steps yeah. would be grueling in itself but being hunched over to you know put that offering on i mean i'm steps. not sure like two kilometers but that's amazing that would be i mean that would be well it sounds like they did it they're doing it so we heard stories of somebody doing prostrations all the way from Tibet. Oh yeah, to, Th that's true. Yeah, to yeah. the Bodhi Temple, right? Prostrations, and then what? when he was, yeah. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, prostrations from all where? the way from Tibet to yeah, the Mahabodhi Temple, and then he had a wound on his forehead from laying oh, his forehead wow, on the ground. Yeah, yeah, I remember that story. So, so these are these are incredible yeah. stories of devotion. Oh. So in speaking of ego, when you mentioned the ego. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the other incredibly amazing thing that's happening there. Those who decide to shave their hair oh. <laughs> and give their hair as an offering. No. So that's another thing that I haven't heard yet no. happening no. in India, in Sanatan Dharma. They're offering their hair. <laughs> and uh, so incredible. a bunch of bald pilgrims are going. Beautiful. That's awesome. That's, that's amazing. Absolute male, female. Um, yeah. we've, I've seen both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very yeah. beautiful, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So, and then it's so funny because we get comments of saying, you know, just today again, grow mm. your hair, <laughs> and yeah. it's like, oh, dude, let it go. Sabina has no plans to grow her hair. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm too lazy. <laughs> but if she were to grow her hair, she should grow it right before we go visit this temple, and then she can shave it. Oh, <laughs> don't put that into people's minds. Yeah, I will too. But anyways, absolutely loved part one of this amazing documentary. If you liked it as much as we did, you yeah. know what to do. You have to hit the like button. <laughs> you have to let us know what you think down in the comments. And you have to raise yourself. <laughs> and raise the world. Thank you so much. We'll see you hopefully on part number two. And thank you, Rakesh. We love you. Mm. Peace. Peace.